Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. In the uh, last class, uh, um, I have already given the definition of environmental auditing. So, and in that related, what are the verifications? Actually, not many people are there. So, just so let me show you what is environmental auditing. So, this is what is environmental auditing. Okay. What is environmental auditing is used for? So, investigate, understand. Okay. So, this is editing is basically essential environmental management tool for measuring the effect of certain activities on the environment against the set criteria of standards. Okay. Some standards will be that with respect to that, how much you are performing. Depending on the type of standards or focus of the audit, there are different types of environmental audits. It depends, okay. There are different different standards are there. So according to that standards, there will be different type of auditing. Okay. Next is organizations of all kinds now recognize recognize the importance of environmental matters and accept that their environmental performance will be scrutinized by the wide range of interested parties. So it is not sometimes not mandatory, but the companies who is dealing with who the company who is doing it, they themselves do it because in that way the credibility credibility will increase. That this is what we have done, so that to show the to the client that we have done it. So that way it is a get big point positive point for them. Okay, so that's why also they do it. And the purpose of this environmental auditing is to in, investigate, understand, and identify the activities of a system. Now, what is activities means because the, the audit of the, that particular audit for which we are doing the audit and the particular activity for which we are doing the aud auditing, that is for that we do the investigate or what it is happening. We are try to understand it and we try to identify the problems if any is thing is happening in that particular activity. Okay, now importance of environmental auditing and manual are used to help improve existing human activities with the aim of reducing the adverse effects of these activities on the environment. Okay, so the basic purpose is to decrease the, uh, what is the effect of these human activities we want to know on the different environmental factors. Okay. Next, when an environmental auditor will study an organization environmental effect, effect in a systematic and documented manner and it will produce in a environmental audit report form okay so it has to be the auditor is very important part of this whole thing okay so that is which, what what will be done by him there are many reasons for undertaking an environmental audit which includes such as environmental legislation of pressures from the customers okay sometimes government move, make a rules that this this uh, legislation is undertaken by the government and they said these are the things we need to do the audit okay because sometimes they do it it is not yearly process but sometimes they do it at that time, they have to do this environmental audit. Sometimes it comes from the pressures of the customers of that particular company. They want that we need to have an environmental assessment uh, audit. So then only they do it. Okay. So these are the things about an environmental audit. Okay. Next is different. Uh, this is the definition of environmental auditing. It is a management tool comprising systematic, documented, periodic. An objective evaluation of how well environmental organizations, management, and equipment are performing with the aim of helping to safeguard the environment by facilitating the management control of practices, assessing compliance with the company policies, which would include regulatory requirements and standard applicables. So basically, this is done by the companies in a systematic, documented, periodic, and objective way. Okay. And to make sure that whatever the company's policies are there, this is that whatever the, they are doing, it is following or not. To know, company does it so that whatever they have created, what they are doing, they are following their guidelines or not. And at the same time, those guidelines created by the company should also follow the regulatory requirement of the and the standards of the government, okay, or authority, whoever is there, okay. And in those, these are the primary words which is used: verification. Which is audit evaluated compliance with regulation and other criteria. Okay, whatever the criteria is set, according to that, what is verification? How many percentage it is achieved? Systematic. Okay, it is in a very methodical manner it is done. Periodic. It is occurred on an established schedule. Okay, in an established manner it is done. In an established schedule it is done. As objective means information again for audit is reported free of opinions. Okay. So basically, this uh, well, this is very important because um, 
audit is but particularly what is a standard will be that with respect to that standard of the, the, the parameter of, of which we are doing the auditing how much percentage it is achieving that is your job is to find a report okay you you don't have your own any opinion regarding this whether it is good or bad you are not nobody to tell okay your job is to just, just tell how much whether it is achieved the target or not or what is the percentage of achievement of these things you can tell but you cannot give any opinion okay so okay Next is okay. Now, whenever we say that, uh, if you if you you already know about environmental impact assessment, okay. Now there is a you you may you, you may also thinking that is very similar to it. If you listen to it, they looks very similar, but they are not actually. Okay, so the difference between the environmental auditing and environmental impact assess assessment is that environmental impact assessment is an anticipatory tool. That is, it takes place before the action carried out. That means if any project has to be carried out, suppose I'm giving a civil engineering project has to be charged. Before that, what will be the impact of this project? That you are going to study. Okay, and that is what is environmental impact assessment is. But compared to that, environmental auditing is something which is done after the project. So it is carried out when the development is already in place and used to check on existing practices, assessing the environmental impact to the current activities. That means first thing it is done after the project. So basically after that, you whatever the requirement, if you want, I, when, when you, uh, I will give you the case study, you will understand in a better way. So, suppose any project is happening, any revolve building is happening, any anything is any any MSW project is created anywhere. So because of that, how the water is affecting, how the diesel uh, oxygen is affected, how this uh, um, COD, BOD, all these things are affected. Okay, that is small example. There is some, so many parameters. So basically, your job is to see what is the thing before the project was there, what is the thing after the project has been done. Okay, and. Auditing means what is the standard with respect to which it should be done. So how much, what is the basic standard with respect to that, how much it is in future decrease. That is what your job is to report. Okay. Next is EIA therefore that attempts to predict the impact on the environment of a future action and to provide this information to those who makes the decision on whether the project should be authorized. Okay. So basically when this job of the environmental impact assessment is that to tell Okay, the authority, the people who, the company that, whether you can go forward with this project or not. Okay, if there's any, what are the uh, impact is there, whether it is within the limit or not. Okay, and if it is not, then maybe they will suggest to go beyond, beyond not go for this project or something like that. And maybe they can suggest some changes so that after that, the environmental impact assessment may give you a better result. Okay, then they can go forward with the project. Okay, basically, this is kind of a helps in decision taking to the authority that the big you know, because in actuality after the project has been done you cannot say what will happen many things will be unseen unpredicted will happen but in environmental impact assessment as a humanly whatever possible you do it and on the basis of that you tell whether it is whether you should go forward with this project or not okay Compared to the environmental auditory, therefore provides a snapshot of looking at what is happening at that point in the time in an organization. So basically, environmental impact assessment actually so what happened. Okay. In case of environmental impact assessment, you predict in what environmental auditing, you actually tell what happened. Okay. Then environmental impact assessment is also legally mandatory tool for many projects in most countries. Okay, environmental impact is very much mandatory. Okay, before you start any project, to get a pro approval for the project, you must do it. Okay, that's why this is done by the uh, what you say neutral authority. Okay, compared to the environment auditing is not legally mandated for all projects. Okay, and it is done when the customer demand it. Okay, and if it is the person, suppose you are building something for someone, so if he, if he want to show the government that yeah, this is because of this nothing happened, and all these these things. Okay. Then at that time to have a positive impact or something like that. In that case, or in case some accident that happened, something in that happened, to uh, give a uh, you know, to give a value to it, or say a number to it, they do this uh, auditing. Okay. Now 
this environment uh, international organization of standardization has produced a series of standards in series of environmental auditing these standards are basically intended to guide organizations and auditors on the general principles common to the execution of environmental audits so basically they give a guidelines okay with respect to uh, to the guide, uh, auditors on the basis of that auditors will see whether those guidelines are followed or not on the and following that guidelines they try to do the assessment or do the auditing okay now there is another term which is called environmental review also so you should know the difference between environmental review and environmental auditing okay so what is the objective so so there is five six questions which is asked from that you will see the difference between this what so one is what is the objective of this two which environmental issues are covered so what upon the required so in how many times they have to do what are the geographical boundaries okay and so legal basis of the audit frequency uh, acha acha this is final step audit sorry okay so this is four questions are asked for this and to give a difference between this environmental review and environmental auditing okay so let us first what is the objective okay determine and review means determine which performance standards should be met for example given is company decides to reduce total organic com compound emission from 100 tons to 10 tons 10 tons per year okay so that is decided by the company okay compared to the environmental is very well performance against these standards one check whether it is really has reduced emission of 10 tons per year so in auditing e actually see okay so here you decide what are uh, which performance not should be met and you here you actually see whether that standard has met or not okay which environmental issues are covered all non environmental issues with or without explicit standard to measure performance okay here look these in this environmental review is a kind of environmental auditing only but here there is no strict standard to follow okay you can g write a general statement also but compared to that environmental auditing is very very methodical there is a very strict standard according to which you have to write okay when you are saying something is not good some parameters have gone down then you exactly give the figure and tell yeah this by this person it is decreased that's why it is not good compared to that in environmental review you can write a general statement also that it is not good all this thing you need not give a number for that okay that is a very significant difference so in this only issues for which standard exist okay so for the own already we have a standard which is given by iso that only you can do the other you cannot do which is beyond your capacity okay how often they are required so before developing an environmental management systems or before an systems or before and after the significant changes the operation practice so this is generally generally done uh, in, in the environmental management systems so before de developing anything you do it once after done it you do you do a check or even this one auditing is regularly on a pre plan cyclical cyclical basis okay and it is please understand that whether it is although it is done regularly and a pre plan cyclical basis it is not a mandatorily yearly basis this uh, we come to the financial audit in that you will see that financial audit has to be done yearly compared to the environmental audit is not like that maybe it is decision of the company only they can do it three months also they can do it two years also okay so what are the geographical boundaries wherever the companies could have an environmental impact in the life of the product like raw material selection transportation manufacturing and product use and disposal uh compared to that usually well defined geographic boundary limited the size distribution company the local and local planning authority so basically what it is, this uh, environmental review can be very very general okay and environmental in, uh, auditing is very very specific okay so this uh, environmental Uh, auditing can come under environmental review but not the reverse way okay so that is the case now then financial audits and the environmental audits what is the difference between this so the different additional questions are what is the legal basis of audit frequency what the, how does it methodology assess the environmental liability of this so the first is legal basis of audit 
part of regulatory or legal process organizations have to perform it okay they must do it okay with few exceptions in case of environmental review few exceptions environmental review and voluntary affairs even the preparatory environmental review which is mandatory under iso 14001 is voluntary as the standard is voluntary okay so actually um, i will give a very small example of suppose i am giving a example of a soil mechanics okay. we have some standard according to this iso 9000 one something like that we have some standard that these are the rules the soil mechanics law has to any lab has to follow okay so if the my soil my my lab is not following that iso standard nobody is going to kill me okay but if i want to have some contracts or something like that at that time the government regulator can tell it okay if you are company uh, your lab is approved by iso 9001 or 14001 whatever this uh, uh, international standards is there then only they can apply okay like we are having the ujsn norms on these things because you can create a, like i give you example you can create a college and give degree also but maybe if the ugc does not recognize your certificate okay nobody is going to stop you from doing it but basically to give a standards okay i hope you understand that part so it is not mandatory it is not government is not saying that you must do it it is it is the preview of this uh, company who is doing it okay and because they have their own advantages of doing it frequency this is annual fs compared to that this is decided on the perform month with as i told you maybe 3 months maybe 6 months maybe 2 years it is decided decided by the organization itself okay who does it is performed by the external staff and certified to do so okay this is done by some external auditors in case of environmental audits performed by external and internal staff professional individually consider there is no legal requirements of audit to be competent or trained although all the professional body in many countries try to stop this okay so there is no such mandatory thing but uh, it is uh, it is expected that the person who is do the auditing is capable enough okay now methodology okay financial audits are based on comparative standard which are public level of general principle of accounting etc okay there is a standard principles of accounting which is they has to follow and this and one of it actually I, i already told you it has to uh it um, they have to just follow the guidelines of this is 14001 so it depends very from how much strictly the auditor is following how much the company is following it's up to them okay so the strictness will vary from one to one okay access to audit whatever the audit has been how much access is there the results are public document in the form of annual reports we are we have a annual reports every every company has to produce so this is the uh, they have to produce very few audits are public although some results are often published in environmental reports okay so this is not mandatorily has to be public okay if the company decided if you want to publish something somewhere to show that they are good then they can do it but it is in the purview of the company itself nobody can force them to do it compared to that financial audit must be done okay in public liability auditors are personally liable for the reports they have to provide a true and fair view of the organizations okay so here also with few exceptions that are that are negotiation between auditor auditee there is no external liability implication in the environmental audits okay so the the auditee means the whose company you are doing the audit and the auditor is the guy who is doing the auditing okay so that can be following the certain standard that can be done okay as long as if you are going from some outside uh, place to show it then maybe you have to follow the certain standard but basically somehow it can be negotiated some of the things okay just like i i'll give you example that suppose in you know, one auditor has come to my lab and doing some he saw my some test he saw that my values are variating uh, uh, compared to more than what is expected one choice has the auditor is that he can directly reject it other choice can be that okay he can he will see that it is the variation is within a very small range so he can tell that he yeah, fix it then we will be complying it so in that case if the company is saying that okay we will we will assure you that we'll whatever the guidelines you are telling we are going to follow it maybe the auditor will give them the iso 14000 whatever standard we are following maybe can give so it is partly negotiable but there should be clear assurance 
with respect to what are the standardization has been created okay and it has to be followed within some standard times okay so next is environmental auditing is done uh, by 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 indian uh, international standard organizations okay there are many uh, different type of standards they have their own different probably different area of work uh, different area of specialist specialization so international organization foundation include environmental auditing in its mission and has developed three environmental uh, uh, three uh, sorry okay has developed three environmental auditing standards addressing general principles conducting audits of the environmental management system and the auditor qualifications okay so uh, <clears throat> so this iso 14000 10 14,000, 11, 14,000, 12—they see into different parts. Okay, so first is, and all three are under this auditing only. Okay, so first 14,000, gives a general principle that can be used in all type of environmental audits. Okay, now this includes clearly defined scope and objective. Okay, second is objectivity, independence, and competence of the auditors. Okay, so it has to be there. How much efficient there? Use of due professional care by the auditor. They must have certain standard professional care, which is must be taken. Okay, systematic procedure to conduct the audit. Okay, what is the system they have to go through? Use of audit criteria, collection of audit evidence and documented findings. Okay, reliable audit findings and conclusions. Okay, and written report of the audit findings. This standardization also gives you how the report should be written. Also, it is. given okay general guideline for that is given compared to the iso 14011 gives a procedure for conducting audit of the environmental management system specific specific element includes defining audit objective determining roles responsibilities activities of auditor clients and auditees performing the audit and reporting results okay 14012 address the qualification of the auditors okay here it is giving the qualification of the uh, auditors education work experience training personal attributes skills competition auditing practices okay so they have their own exams they, they how they are performing in those cases due professional care language and communication skills everything will come under that okay so these are the three things which is given but we will focus only on iso 14010 okay we are not going for this uh, uh, we are only general uh, this two maybe 11 also will give some uh, to some extent but our focus will be this one 14010 general principle okay and how this pro and, the, and the procedure 14010 and 14011 14012 we are not going to say how did the collision auditors that is not such a significant from an engineering point of view okay okay now the general principle of environmental audit okay so in this uh, uh, iso 14010 describe general principle of environmental audit the documents are was well written in all possible cases in mind so not only for people from within the urbanization preparing audits of their own origin but also for external audits okay that should be kept in mind when you are writing this document therefore a distinction was made between the client the organization commissioning the audit and the audit is the organization to be audited okay the commissioning means uh, uh, the person who is demanding maybe it can be government maybe any any court or uh, court legislation or you know anything it can be and audit is the against to be audited the in large organization the distinction is also valuable the part of organization to be audited may be different than the part of organization that wants to be audited to be perform so in a very large organization within the organization people can do the auditing but they cannot be from the same area they may be one team is in delhi may one team in in mumbai or chennai they have to do their own other different i mean the team which is in delhi may can go to chennai to do their auditing compared to that the chennai team can go to come to delhi something like that i mean what i am trying to tell the local person cannot do the auditing on that same one okay that care has to be taken 
the uh, general principle of environment auditing here it should be clear that there would be sufficient information available over the subject of the audit it should be also clear that there are adequate resources available that in time assistance means person is there to assist you and there is sufficient cooperation from the auditor that means the, the company on whom the organization which has to be audited audited they should be very very cooperative i mean whatever whenever you are asking for something they should immediately provide it okay if your son is asking for this data that data everything they should immediately provide okay if they are not then that would be a negative point okay then before an audit start the objective and scope should be clear okay and that can be shared with the client also that uh, yeah this is what we are supposed to used to do this is a job for the auditor together with the client once they have established the audit should also be informed okay so once that has been done auditor and the client the client that means the organization the government or whatever once they do it once they decide these are the parameters on which these are the objectives of our auditing then they will once they they should be informed the audit even the company of whom they are doing the auditing will should be also know it okay so all the parties should know it okay so now oh yeah yeah one thing i want to say that now three party are there one is the auditor who is doing the auditing and the client who has ordered the or organization which have commissioned the audit and the audit the company or whatever system of whom the auditing is done so that is audit okay so you should know the difference between these two three now general principles okay acha uh, listen uh, now in three three um, three minutes it is going to stop okay so what i am saying is that i will send a link to you uh, another new link you click that link and we will start it again okay hello students yes sir yeah yes sir yeah once this is uh, this part is finished then once this is complete then i will go and uh, give you another link within 5 minutes that link will activate it and you, you can start again okay okay so in 3 minutes whatever i can finish i am going to finish okay general principle of environmental auditor ensuring the objectivity and independence of the uh, listen this after this the video will be created so it will take another 4 5 minutes so in another 10 minutes we'll start again okay anyway and so the objectivity and independence of auditor is a must okay he should be fair okay they should be independent activities uh, they, uh, they edit that means the one should not edit the activities of the own departments okay they have to do or for other department in large organization this independence is easier than the small one it is easier to use auditor from other locations or other departments which i was giving example already competences and other principles related to audit they should possess an adequate combination of knowledge skill and experience for the specific audit and auditor should always work according to general expectation about how auditor should act which is described in the document as due to professional care this is ever up and taking into account requirements about confidentiality discretion as well as the quality assurance process so, so the, all these things uh, that has to be assured okay and auditor should follow well defined procedure uh, uh, and iso 14 recommended for conducting an environmental audit so the procedure is given in the iso 14000 11 another principle is that in an audit one needs criteria which link to the objectivity of the project auditor collects evidence that can be compared with the criteria and this will give them the findings either the evidence conforms to the criteria okay so this auditor has to find those things whether it conforming to that criteria or, or does not okay there is no no i mean there is no middle way yes or no so letter is then to find, find the non conformity or the non compliance so if it is does not then it is non compliance i i mean that is two words one is compliance other is non compliance okay that's what it is very clear so the auditor will just write in whether this thing is complying or not complying there is no more to it since if every audit only a sample of information available will be used the results of audit should be always be using uh, use taking this factor of uncertainty into account so this thing has to be this is very important that because whenever any auditor is doing doing editing he is taking a sample of the whole big system okay so when you do such a thing you have to calculate the risk of that mathematically you have to calculate how much risk of this type of amount of sampling so they have their own way of doing if, if there is 100 of data is there out of 10 samples we have to be taken how then is that then 50 sample will take that is decided by them okay so that has to be done manage the risk one should 
take into account the planning execution audit. There are number of risks areas. Audit should be planned so that at least these risks are adequately taken into account. Reliable audit findings are also play a role. In. One has to present overall audit conclusion based on the findings. Then it is important that the chance of missing significant finance findings is minimal. Okay, so the findings will be more reliable if this risk has been reduced. Okay, so I am going to send you the link now. So after that, we'll start it again. Okay.